board met an executive session tonight. We're now ready to begin the public portion of our uh, meeting. Uh, I wanted to first uh, draw your attention to a very notable uh, retirement, Myra, Myra Hernandez Kinlock, who is known as Mrs. HK. Some people didn't even know she actually had two last names, but she does. <laughs> as Kinlock. She has been our elementary teacher, uh, elementary music teacher in both schools for some years now. And she has touched so many students. She is a constant source of both instruction and inspiration to our students. And if you've ever met Myra, she is enthusiastic even on days when you know half her population has, has runny noses and there's an endless gray winter. And she finds a way to get through to kids and also adults, even in those times. She is a proud you know, Cuban American. Uh, she is just an exemplary person, always has new ideas, uh, fresh, fresh take on school music. She's going to be so missed and so hard to replace. So um, I always wish retirees well and wish they weren't retiring, and that is the case with Myra as well. Um, in Trenton, there's a budget battle going on, and continues to go on, it may go right down to 4th of July again this year, although uh, the legislature and the governor are guaranteeing there will be no beach chair photos this time. <laughs> there are a number of school security bills coming up uh, in the legislature. There's been a series of hearings on school security statewide um, ever since Parkland. There have been so many suggestions, so many ideas. But school security is really, I mean, there are some constants. We want our children to be as safe as possible, but school security is also very individual to districts. Different districts have different needs. Uh, they have different facilities. And so the legislature, the legislators, I think, are torn between trying to prescribe sort of one-size-fits-all solutions and trying to understand that different districts and districts may want armed officers in schools. Some districts may want more security cameras, it depends. There is a proposal um, that has been passed by the Senate, not yet by the Assembly, that would bond for $1 billion, um, uh, and $500 million of that would be for grants for school security statewide for regular, all school districts. Um, if that passes the Assembly and is signed by the governor, it would then go on the November ballot for a public statewide referendum. So stay tuned, we shall see. Uh, that may not go through the legislature until after the budget is settled, but it is, it is certainly a large amount of money for school security. There's also another bill pending um, that would make security costs that increase more than 2% over the previous year's security costs outside the uh, tax levy cap. So you would, without, um, going to the voters specifically, you could um, raise your budget if the board opted to uh, buy more than 2% to accommodate security costs. So both of those things are pending. So there is a great awareness right now of school security. And that is the President's report, Superintendent's report. So I have a number of things tonight, so bear with me. Uh, first of all, I, I just want to touch base on uh, the last board me uh, meeting we were discussing uh, staff diversity, um, and, and I just want to report on our numbers. I didn't have them available at that meeting. Um, currently, our student population is at 25.3% uh, 25, uh, 25 are minority students. Our certified staff is 7.3%. Um, I have reached out to several districts in the area that are similar to us in size, um, and a few of them have gotten back to me. Just to throw out their numbers so you have some comparative uh, data. Caldwell's student population is 22% minority. Their staff is 6% minority. Cedar Grove's uh, student population is 16%. Their staff is 4%. And Verona student population is 20%. And their certified staff is 5.5%. Um, uh, this is a group of superintendents along with a few others that uh, I spoke to last, um, last spring and, and discussed this issue and it's something that we, we've all been having ongoing discussions about of trying to 
um, make our staffs a little more diverse. Um, and we'll continue to work on that. It's a topic for our next um, personnel committee meeting. Uh, and we're going to continue to look at this and determine how to best proceed forward in addressing these issues. Um, other topics, um, just a testing update. I believe park is done, except for maybe a couple makeups here and there. But the majority of the testing is done. Uh, AP testing is in its second week at the high school. It lasts for two weeks in May. Um, we will have the new science testing going on, which will be grades 5, 8, and 11 this year. And that will happen at the end of this month. Um, and it will be interesting to see how those new exams um, um, will look like and how our students perform. The only problem is it, it, it's field test, and we won't see those results year one. Uh, year two, there will be a baseline test. We'll see those results for one down. And the third year is when um, they'll start using those results and, and publish them um, in our student uh, performance reports. A uh, ton of, uh, you know, it's a month, a month left of school, and with that comes a lot of end of the year functions. Uh, Hall of Fame dinner, honor inductions, prom, award assembly, field trips, field days, transition activities, playing, print, playing uh, band concerts. Uh, so, you know, keep up, uh, up on top of your calendars. Uh, there's a lot going on in the district, um, and hopefully we'll, we'll get a chance to see you there supporting all our student activities. Uh, last week, the National Honor Society had their inductions for the new members. We had 44 new members which is a, a, a new high for the Glen Ridge High School, um, so that's terrific to see. Uh, the week prior to that, um, the Chinese um, National Honor Society had their first induction, um, so that's a, a new program here at the high school. Um, and it's great to see those students who uh, have now been in the program for five years um, continue the, um, taking that language, and next year we will be offering an AP Chinese course. Ridgewood Avenue play was this past weekend, and uh, I just got to thank um, really the three main people involved, uh, Heather Valentine, Renee Paleo, and Erica Shireen for just an unbelievable show. Um, there were over 200 students involved. The sets were terrific. The, the, the costumes were terrific. The students performed their hearts out. Um, you know, we got in praying, so we had some flying students on stage. Um, <laughs> And, you know, their organization, and again, over 200 students involved, you can try to imagine what it takes to organize that. So I can't say enough about them, but also all the parents who volunteered to manage that production. It, it's just immense. And, and um, it's been a few years of Heather running that show, and it's, it's amazing. She's done a, a terrific job, and we're very thankful for that. Um, Girls Lacrosse, uh, they have now repeated as Essex County champions, so it's very exciting. Uh, U.S. News and World Report, uh, I don't really like to talk about rankings too much, but I, I do want to recognize, um, based on their ranking, uh, Glen Ridge was the 23rd highest, um, best performing school in New Jersey. 12 of the schools above us were admission only schools, and in the nation they had us at 460. It's nice to see that, um, and you take it with a grain of salt, as we do, we do with all ranking systems. Um, I do want to talk about Meyer a little bit also. Um, she's just a, the music teacher at an elementary school is, is so much more than the music teacher. Um, they're providing all this content to the students, but they're also really a, um, the public face of the community where you know, parents are invited in twice a year to see their kids perform and, and what she does and how she gets the students to perform and how she interacts with the parents is it's just a reflection of quality school uh, school system and um, you know she's such an outstanding instructor such an outstanding individual always has kind words um, always willing to discuss uh, anything with you and it's it's it, it's always tough losing someone who, who's so talented um, but also care so much about the profession of the students, so she will be missed immensely. Um, and the last thing I have tonight, and I actually get to turn it off to Jack DeWitt, uh, who's going to give us our fall um, violence and vandalism report. Uh, it's a little bit different this year. 
Uh, the state has changed the report out on our harassment, intimidation, bullying, investigations, trainings, and programs in our dis district report of uh, violence and vandalism. And this is for reporting period one. Twice per year we report out to the state. Period one is every year from July 1st through December 31st, and period two being January 1st through June 30th of the school year. Generally what occurs is we report out about a month after that period ends, um, but that also is based on this, our ability to input the information to the state, and they've made some significant changes over the last year. Um, originally, they had told us that we would have this up and running for December. They changed it, they moved it back a little bit, and it's actually, the system just went up in April, but I'll get into that in a minute. So this is for reporting period one, and reporting period two will, will be coming. So the big change was um, the old system was called Evers. It was the electronic vandalism, violence, um, violence vandalism reporting system, and it also included where we would put our HIB reports and any incidents that occurred. The new system is called the Student Safety Data System, and this combines both our HIB reports that we put in, whether they were uh, alleged reports and when they were confirmed, and also anything that comes up with violence, vandalism, whether it's on school grounds or off of school grounds. So it's a new system. They've actually changed it on the uh, New Jersey Department of Web of Ed website. Um, again, this was uh, from the report from the state. They had originally told us that back in December that it would be ready, and actually they thought it would be ready in March, and there was a delay. It did open finally up in April. So we're reporting again out the first part now. The second section will be entered in by July 16th, and then at some point between September and December 31st, they're recommending that we present that to the Board of Ed and to the public. So I just have uh, last year's presentations up as far as numbers just to see it, to show you how it has changed a little bit. If we look at last year, when we input it into the state and what we reported out, it would break down each school would come up by the number of reported and completed HID investigations, and then how many of those were actually confirmed incidents. So it actually broke the data out separately before. So if we look at last year, for the same time period that we're presenting, we would see that there was a total of 13 um, reports, investigations, and then of those, seven were actually confirmed. So that's how it was reported initially to the state. The same thing occurs with the violence and vandalism. But what they used to have us present out was the, just the total counts of incidents and also any incidents that involved costs to the district. So if we look at last year, for the same period, we had zero and zero. The new system uh, breaks it down a little bit differently. It includes what's considered incidents. So any incident is an act of violence, vandalism, substance abuse, weapons, and also confirmed hits. It now has them all inputted as an incident. It also lists a new category, which is called other incidents leading to removal. Uh, an example of that would be if something occurred off of school grounds, but was still violence, vandalism, vandalism um, and it included our students. So for example, if a student left early, walked down the block, was a couple blocks from school, another student left, and there was a simple assault, or there was something that occurred off of school grounds during the school day, but involved our students, we would be reporting that, of course, to would have, maybe the police would be involved in that for the incident, and then that actually would be reported out under an other incident, because it's not. Is that only during school hours? It's anything that occurs within the school, but it's, it would be involving our students. So we have weekends? Yes, we have weekends. Um, that's also broken down when it is how many alleged, have alleged, so that's the actual number of investigations that occur. And then we also reported in the number of trainings and programs, which what we had reported also, but it was reported separately in previous years. So if we look at last year, for example, or the, the beginning of this period, July 1st through December 31st, there were seven alleged HIV incidents that occurred at Ridgewood Avenue, and there were four that occurred at the high school. So we had a total of 11 that occurred across the four buildings. So, I took that data just so that we could present it out to the Board of Ed and uh, the community so they could see um, 
how it was presented in previous years and also get a look at that. When we look at the incidents that occurred, again, there were seven that happened uh, at the high school. There was four uh, investigations that happened at Ridgewood. Of those, one was actually found at Ridgewood to be a confirmed hit incident. And at Ridgewood, at, at uh, Glenridge High School, there was zero that were actually found to be confirmed hit incidents after the investigation was, occurred, uh, was completed. With those investigations, uh, I would say I, I think the majority of them there was also, they did fall under code of conduct, so we, although they didn't fit maybe what would be the HIB criteria for a definition, they did have other um, remediation, whether it was counseling, whether there was detention, there were other things. So if they don't fit that criteria, they are still handled that way. Um, so of the one that did occur, the type of bullying was verbal. Um, the investigation found that it was an intentional HIB. Um, You'll notice that protected class is written there under the nature of bullying, and also that what discipline or remediation was imposed is also just listed as appropriate actions were taken. Um, because it was only one incident, if we were to list those things on a public report, it might focus on who that student or students might be, so that's been left out of this report. So, what exactly does protected class mean? What, what exactly does protected class mean? Sure, so there's a uh, the number, when they're looking, uh, when there's an hit investigation that occurs, it's something that's obviously reported to the building principal, then it's an investigation begins, and they're looking to see if it's uh, race, religion, creed, um, sexual orientation, gender, gender bias, there's a list of that. Okay. So it's in one of those. Okay. Uh, I've also broken down the number of violence, vandalism, substance, and weapons, which is also included in that number. And you'll notice that there are zero incidents that occurred at Forest, Linden, and Ridgewood Ave schools. There were six that occurred at Glenridge High School. Five of them were substance use or possession, and one was trespassing. And with the majority of those, the police were involved in the investigations. Um, this is the, the list of anti-bullying specialists. So again, when investigation occurs, one of the people that's listed on here, we have anti-bullying specialists in each of the buildings. They are involved in the investigation. They're also involved with the building administrator, is generally involved in that investigation, and then that's reported to myself, to Mr. Phillips, and then we report those out to the Board of Ed. Um, for the first half of the year from July 31st, but of course probably beginning in September, running through December, there was a total of 48 different trainings that occurred across the four buildings, so they're listed on here. There was 12 that actually occurred district-wide, so there were things that we did across the building, whether it was the first day of school, whether it was um, training for the anti-bullying specialists or the administrators, and there was also 33 programs that occurred across the schools. So I listed on the bottom some of them that occurred. Forest Ave, one of the things that they had was a giving tree, student assembly. Uh, Landon Ave had a presentation. They've been doing one book club, with his, which is a monthly character ed lesson that each of the students uh, go through in their classrooms. Ridgewood Avenue had the We Schools Assembly, which was students creating um, philanthropic uh, initiatives, both globally and locally. Glenridge High School has Hero and Cool Kids as one of the examples where the sophomores go down to the fifth grade and they work on lessons. Um, and, and the administration and the bullying specialists had a workshop on harassment, intimidation, and bullying. The other piece that we usually get at the end of the year is our school self-assessment for determining grades. At the end of the year, we gather the data, we add it up, um, we present to the state all of these things that we've done they take a look at the numbers, we grade ourselves, and then they determine if we're meeting certain criteria. You'll notice that there's the 14-15 and 15-16 school year is up here. Um, I actually just got a response from the state. We're still awaiting the 16-17 school year grade report. Generally, we get that back in January, but I was told there's a delay and they're not sure when it will come. Hopefully it will be soon and then I can add that on to either the next presentation or in between there. It'll be 
post it tomorrow morning. Oh, we'll post wait, it. Yeah, yep, we'll post it on. The, it'll be on the main the main web page. It's on the bottom left. Okay. It's there, and when you click on it, yep, there's that little uh, I guess it's quick navigation guide. If you click on there, and it'll be it'll have a link to it. Okay. And my one request for next the next reporting time would be that we make it all paper so that we aren't straining to see any of the print because it's it's hard for us to have hard to the audience. So sure. I, I know it's that's not your department, Jeff, but nope. we can have it larger. Even if it takes more slides, I think everybody would agree seeing is better than you know, yeah. Brevity, clarity, and brilliance is good, but seeing it is even better. It so, looks really big on the, on the screen, screen in front of me, <laughs> so. so. So, Jack, we just because I think you're closer to the, uh, the detail than, than we are. I mean, are you seeing the trends either in, in, a, in a very positive way or in a negative way with the data? Um, or is it one, is it, tell us the difficulty in pulling that out with the new system versus the old? So I did have to go through each incident to, to find them to be able to pull that out and separate it because it is just reported now. When it says incidents, when we actually look at the number that's reported to there, the incidents that actually occur could be a hit, but it could also be those substance issues that came up. If there was violence and vandalism, if there was things like that, it's all lumped into one number. So I had to go in and actually look and say, okay, our total number of incidents was seven from that, and it would actually list them in the state website when we report it. So I had to go into each um, into each web page to look for that. As far as the trends, the numbers are similar from the first half of the year. In the last three years that I looked at, they're very similar as far as the number of hit incidents that occur. Um, generally, it seems because maybe because it's you know September, October, November, December, there's four months of the school year, there are less incidents that occur as far as even investigations. Um, I think too, you know. As the year goes on, those we start to see an increase in those, but the numbers are relatively the same in the last three years. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Members, other questions? Why, uh, why did they make this change? I mean, it seems like it's uh, it's potentially not as helpful as the, as the old system. It's just a little bit more opaque. Yeah, any 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 feedback on why they did? No, I, you know, I, I've actually emailed them a couple times just to get feedback in general of when things are coming to us, um, and it's difficult to even get feedback from that. It was a change that they, they've shut down several of the, when you go to the New Jersey homeroom, there's many things that we report out on. They've shut down a bunch of those systems, and I guess maybe they were antiquated systems that are, you know, going to something that's newer, technology-wise, uh, um, but I'm not sure why. They, they said it was better to keep it, on the, the page that came from the state, the memo said it was better to have it all in one place. So did the change precede the change in administrations, or did it come along with the change in administrations? And uh, in the, because the DOE has changed over. Yeah, so, so we received notice last August that they were okay. going to be making so a change. And then they said it would be, again, it would be up by November. So we've been kind of waiting. And then in November, when nothing came, in December, a memo came out. I think it was December 19th came out and said that we should have something by April. Um, in March, I was still checking, uh, along with um, Gloria Liz, who is the secretary, we kept checking every day, because we wanted to be able to input the data. We had the numbers, we had all the information, but actually inputting it was what we were waiting for, so that we could present it out. Um, and I think it opened like April 4th or something, and they had a very short window. They closed when we had to report that first half of the year by April 28th. Or maybe the third. Board members, anything else? Okay, audience. I see you, Mrs. Uh, I have a few questions. Sure. Yeah, my, one is back on the slide where you labeled um, uh, protected classes, and Anthony asked a question about that um, protected class, I think. What do you put if it's the category that is covered by the Anti Bullying Bill of Rights Act of other distinguishing characteristics, which can be things such as social weakness, physical size, many other things that are not a traditional protected class are considered another distinguishing characteristic. In fact, according to New Jersey's own statistics, I believe it's in school districts, about 65%, 60 or 65% of the time, they use other distinguishing characteristics, which is not our experience here. But, so what do you put in there if it's another distinguishing characteristic? 
if it was labeled as that, we can actually list that under there when we're going into to it. So we would list it as other distinguishing characters. That and it would be in that as, column? Yep, it could be. If you looked at last year's presentation, which is still up, oh, or the last two that are still up there, it does have them broken down. Um, it's listed as protected class right now. Like I said, there's only one. So if we put it up there, it could. we were told it could be um, it could indicate who the student was. If so, listed, because, there, because the number is one, but if you do look at last year's, where I think at the end of the year, the last report had, don't quote me, five, seven, something like that, it does have a breakdown of the different characteristics. Okay, so you're saying that that may not be a protected class thing? You may have, you just put it there to um, protect the privacy of the student. It could have been another distinguishing characteristic? For this one incident, yeah, it's listed as protected class. That's what we were, but is that accurate? It's, a, it's one of those, it I, would fall under one of those areas, yes. I thought I heard you say that you just put it up there to protect the privacy of the student. Right, but oh, Did I miss it, here? No, so, given the detail of what the protected class is. Yes. Right, no, I understand that. I understand that. But, so, it, it's not an other distinguishing characteristic then in that case. That is, for this one it was not. Okay, yes. okay. Um, so essentially, during this period, there was no other distinguishing characteristics, even though about 65% of the time in most schools, it is. Am I reading that right? Well, there was one incident. Right. So. I understand. Um, or what? I should say there was one in that one HIV investigation that was found to be confirmed as a HIV. Mm -hmm. There were others, mm -hmm. but it might not have been might not have met the criteria. Okay. My other question is, and to be honest, um, last time you did this. I just thought it was a mere oversight, but um, the, as I, I recall correctly, the last um, agenda that was published prior to the meeting did not mention that there was going to be um, an HIV presentation. Yet there was. This is last time. In this agenda, when I read it online, and again, I could be wrong, I didn't even see violence and vandalism. But now it's on here and what's been handed out. But once again, it doesn't list hip. Now, two times in a row, I have to ask you, why was there this oversight that it wasn't listed? A lot of people are interested in it and would probably come. Um, I happen to come almost every time, so I happen to hit it. But it's starting to look like maybe somebody, you know, you do not want people to know it. You're talking about it. Certainly, that's not the intention of the board, and I'm sure we can correct it for some. Apparently, the, the hips are fall, falling, uh, falling under the bounds. Um, sure, they do, but if we uh, can I have no problem. make a parenthetical, since, no since problem. that's the department's definition, we can make a parenthetical that says hip. Well, and previously, they were two separate reporting right. and I understand it's come together. But anyway, you cut it, the, um, the law has a requirement that twice a year the you know, chief officer report to the board in a public forum the numbers. So if you don't put it on the agenda, people don't know you're just not going to talk about that. Right. You're absolutely right. So we'll fix that. Thank you. Um, other, uh, yes, Lord Jean. Uh, just for the uninitiated, Jack, uh, you had talked about the fact that the other incidents didn't fall under the technical definition for HIV, but that they were considered up against the behavior code or code the of conduct, code yes. of conduct, and they were dealt with in that manner. For, for those of us who aren't as familiar with the statute, it would really help to understand what the distinguishing characteristics that make something escalate from one level, you know, from the code of conduct to a technical definition of him. Sure, so. And I know it's a bit like you could go to trainings for like, you know, six weeks and still be wow. fine parsing it. <laughs> but I meant like the elevator speech. <laughs> Just to clarify, it's not an escalation. I, I okay. Go ahead. It's a, it's a categorization. It's a categorization. But sorry. No, thank you. I don't sure. want anything to add. I'm sorry. I was just going to say that that um, it needs to that the, the elevator, the quick quick version of it is it needs to impact one of um, a distinguishing characteristic or uh, impact sex, race, uh, perceived characteristic, I should call it. 
Um, it's something that needs to impact the orderly operations of the day, the school day, somehow with the student. And it also needs to be something um, that someone at that age should know, right? So if it was a kindergartner and they were making statements to someone who might be different or perceived different than if it was an eight, 12 grader, right? So they need to understand what it is. Um, and which is why there's so many levels when there are reporting. It's not just one person that's doing the report. Um, it is an anti-bullying specialist who we send out for training each year. Um, the four anti-bullying specialists actually went out for three and a half days last year to train. Mm -hmm. um, and then we also bring in our own, report in our own lawyers to do training with us to, to add on to that, to make sure that everything. There's changes that are also coming too. Mm -hmm. So you know, as things kind of evolve, we do keep uh, updating. But it really is, the quick version of it is it needs to be those three pieces. Okay. And sometimes it, it'll fit two pieces. There's something that you look at it and go, yes, we feel it was gender or orientation or something. And we also feel that it did disrupt the day and they were upset or they were not upset. But maybe based on the age, it's something that we wouldn't think they would understand. And that's why it is great that it's not just the anti-bullying specialist that's involved. It's also the district, uh, the building administrator too. Th that helps a lot. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, let's see. Uh, one moment. Is there anyone else asking a first question? Okay. Second question. Okay. Well, twice prior to this meeting, and thank you for bringing up that question because it's actually even more complex as you might imagine. <laughs> um, and I have a document that says you guys saying it's the four prong, um, uh, you know, detection system, not a three. So I have to check into that, but. Um, I have suggested now for the third time, what you all do in terms of bringing in bullying presentations is great. You know, the ones that you have both with the kids and the parents can come at night. Why don't you bring in a presentation that explains to the parents the law and also both their, their, their rights, their privileges, and the obligations they may have in a, you know, at least a condensed format because there's a lot of misunderstanding out there. And I think you all can do this whole district and yourselves. A lot of um, services, it can also help you have parents know ahead of time, well, maybe this is what you're maybe this is. Um, one of the things that I've asked administrators to do is, is address this um, when they have um, parents uh, um, captive. For lack of better words, whether it's at back to school night, whether it's at home school meetings, um, typically um, you've been to a couple of our night presentations. They're not well attended. Um, the last uh, run, uh, Halloween story was um, what we would consider well attended. There was about uh, roughly 100 parents there. Um, just from past experiences, when we're trying to do something like what Educational, uh, our parent turnout is usually around 20 to 25 parents. So we have avenues, I think, that's uh, way more parents available to discuss those topics and educate them there. Maybe so that it's, you know, the way we do coffee conversation, as you say, when we have parents there for some other purpose, mm -hmm. like back to school night, like where you get your parents have many reasons for being there. Mm -hmm. I think the more reasons parents have for being there, the more, the more of them will. Mm -hmm. With all due respect, I, I certainly understand that point. One way around it is if you can do a daytime presentation and a nighttime presentation, we hit different populations. And the other thing is, as Jack referenced, it's so complicated. I'm not sure you can do it over a cup of coffee. I mean, that really, no, no, I didn't mean at coffee, but I meant that's, we have coffee and conversations at, at times when we think parents can congregate, just as we would have the most effective presentations on code of conduct and give at the times when parents congregate those. And, and just one more comment. I would suggest it should be a neutral third party, not necessarily somebody from the district, because I have personally yet had anybody fully explain the age of your coffee and So um, there, there are professionals who do that. There are certainly a number of people out there, you're right, who do that, who do it uh, for all kinds of groups. So it, it might be something to consider. So thank you. Other questions or comments? Okay. Um, we have some, uh, it is the first meeting of the month, so we have plenty of liaisons.
on the court. So without further ado, uh, let's start. Michael, will you do anything? Uh, missed the Forest Avenue home school meeting because we were in exec session, but I did get a report from Elizabeth, and um, she told me that they've been very successful with fundraising this year, and she's happy to report that they've been able to fund the new equipment for their playground. Um, they hosted their casino night, and that alone raised $26,000, and she wanted to thank specifically the committee that, that worked on this. Um, they had their learning garden uh, the week before last. The students learned about plants and more. Um, they planted seeds in clear orbs and are now watching the plants grow at home. And they have, again, a really dynamic parent um, committee that put that together. Their spring carnival was last weekend and was a huge success. Um, although, as at my last contact with her, they didn't have a total of money which they made. And teacher appreciation week was last week. students were encouraged to write personalized letters to all of the teachers. Um, last of all, I got a report from the Alternative Funding um, GR Benefits Group. Um, Kathy Weisenberger says that they're in the process of winding down the GRB initiative. Um, they'll be officially ending the Met at the end of July. Uh, there will be a Dads and Grads gifts card sale this month, but the last one is for any type of grocery or other cards, uh, cards will be taken um, through June 1st. I just think we should all take a moment to thank the Kathy and the crew because they've raised a lot of money for this district over the years of this program. And um, so kudos to them. They, they put a lot of effort and they worked so hard. They really have. So um, Kathy and uh, Anne Lisa and the whole group of the parents who are going to pay some money. Um, you know, I, I can't even list the number of projects that they've had over the years. So hopefully next week. And uh, so at least, <coughs> excuse me, met my uh, last week. <coughs> we well, Did we elaborate? Okay. Um, the Richard Avenue Home and School meeting I uh, did not attend again because we were all in exact session, but I do have uh, the draft minutes in which Nicole Quinn uh, furnished to me. And um, they've celebrated Earth Week, uh, park testing. There was a presentation on puberty. I'm sure you all remember this fondly from your own uh, years in middle school. Uh, they had an autism awareness event. Um, also, bring your child to work day, and many of our staff brought children. 
Uh, they were looking forward to sixth grade placement math test on May 4th, Teacher Appreciation Week, as in the other schools, and Peter Pan. Uh, they were having, looking forward to some transition events, some of which have happened, some of which are yet to happen, including transition events for parents and special ed students, uh, admin visit to Forest and Linden, the Linden Buddy Breakfast, the Forest Buddy Breakfast, a parent orientation on May 17th, and Move Up Day on June 8th. Um, they were looking forward to the RAS sleepover, or at least some people were, uh, <laughs> sixth grade visits to the high school, the sixth grade steam fair, which is May 23rd, the May 25th rhino romp, um, math testing, uh, and then um, they mentioned a teacher placement for next year, including Mr. White moving to the literacy lab and um, hiring in third and fifth grade. And uh, for funding, the Women's School appropriated $3,200 for five inflatables for field day. I don't know if I want to know. Uh, and Barnes and Noble gift cards up to $550 were approved. And I think those must have been for either students who won the reading contest. Yes, for students who won the reading contest. And that is the Ridgewood Avenue report. Uh, the personnel policy committee met uh, last week on the 11th. Um, most of the <coughs> personnel uh, meeting, we're going to have a policy meeting coming up soon. Uh, Dirk referenced it. And uh, at the last meeting, we mostly discussed the uh, high school principal search. And, uh, and uh, last week, uh, the board's uh, special counsel um, met with the urology groups uh, counsel in front of, the, I think, I believe, an administrative law judge um, to try to work out a settlement for their vacancy of the central school. Um, so finance and facilities met uh, with the attorney because they had to have multiple rounds of these discussions. Uh, and so we were uh, making attempts to try to broker a uh, agreement that we don't have uh, as of today, so the saga continues. We hope that uh, that we will be able to reach a resolution uh, you know, by the next board meeting. To make it clear, we own the building. It's yes. Well, we, we own the building. Uh, it's really just uh, as it relates to the timing of the urology group's vacancy um, and their lack of uh, vacancy is impacting our planning for the construction for the school. So obviously, there's, if not, we don't know the date that they're leaving, we don't know how to schedule bid packages, uh, all that type of activity. We need to break them in, in, into two packages, all of that type of thing. So that's, it's really, you know, it's causing us to spin our wheels, but we hope that uh, a resolution is uh, on the horizon. Uh, then lastly, I did as a parent uh, uh, attend the the Girls Club Fashion Show uh, last Friday night oh, at the Women's did. Club, and I gotta say it was fantastic. <laughs> we do fortunately have a, a town of some very handsome uh, young men and young ladies, uh, and they had a lot of fun, uh, and they really did a nice job, so. Speaking objectively, of course. Yes, of course. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. All right, uh, we have some administrative items. Uh, Michael, would you move the administrative items? That is an investigation of a HIV and also the superintendent's merit goals, which you've all reviewed in your packages. Um, may I have a second? Second. Second from Tracy. Uh, any discussion on either before we move the other uh, reading code? Oh, okay, Peter, would you call the roll? Mr. Campbell? Aye. Mr. Deleuze? Aye. Mr. Kepler? Aye. Ms. Lanning? Aye. 
Mr. Romano? Aye. Ms. St. Albert? Aye. Dr. Yaros Ramos? Aye. Ms. Ginsburg? Aye. Ms. Shishara? Okay, personnel items, David? I will be walking through P10. All right, and I have a second. Second. Okay. Uh, in keeping with our rules, personnel is discussed, personnel items are discussed in exact session. Uh, when you're ready, Peter, would you call the roll? Mr. Campbell? Aye. Mr. Ballou? Aye. Mr. Keppel? Aye. Ms. Lang? Aye. Mr. Romano? Aye. Ms. St. Auburn? Aye. Dr. Yaros Ramos? Aye. Ms. Ginsburg? Aye. Motion carries. Uh, curriculum items. Michael, I know uh, the happy event that the marching band is uh, going to attend the St. Patrick's Day Parade in Dublin, Ireland in uh, March of next year. So we think we're going to raise the requisite fund. Yes, they will do it. And I think parents are probably buying with each other for chaperone. No, I, I will be chaperone. Uh, two children. Uh, I will see one and all of this. Okay, may I have a second? Second. Second from Heather. Any discussion on any of the curriculum items, which are all field trips? Discussion? All right, Peter? Mr. Campbell? Aye. Mr. Ballou? Aye. Mr. Keppel? Aye. Ms. Lang? Aye. Mr. Romano? Aye. Ms. St. Auburn? Aye. Dr. Yaros Ramos? Aye. Ms. Ginsburg? Aye. Motion carried. Okay. Uh, Tim, would you move the business items? Yes, I move B1 through B6. May I have a second? A second. Second from Paul. Any discussion on the many business items? I have a question. Sure. Um, I noticed the, that um, this is after the This is around as a social space. Okay. So it's a misprint. Okay. That's okay. Did you have another question? Well, I just thought it was interdisciplinary, so I was confused by it. So that was not true. So it's two, two humanities teachers. Is there a plan to send um, math teachers out or science teachers? Based on the, on the course, we wouldn't be okay. courses. We wouldn't send a math, a science, a possibility. Uh, I'm just talking since we're renewing the food service, mm -hmm. I wonder if you could just give us some feedback uh, from the standpoint of quality uh, relative to the previous provider. Oh, night and day. Okay. They're much more professional. Uh, I haven't heard any complaints, and I've, been, I've asked people to check around. And uh, as far as our profit, I mean, they, they run a good yeah. shift, and we're, we're, we're going to meet that goal. Okay, that's, I mean, that's a new I, I figure indicative of, uh, of actually having a, a food service is never going to be everybody's favorite, right? So it's always a challenge, and I think that if we're if we're running the, in the black predicament of getting enough uh, interest mm -hmm. by the student bodies to, yeah. to make it, uh, and what's unless going? anybody's hearing something that is just outrageously priced or something. And what's going? What what looks a little bit different is we're adding another line, another serving line next year at Ridgewood. So we're adding a person because we need to speed that line up. And we're adding another person at the high school. And, and you know, we, we're also going to be buying some equipment in preparation for a unit plunge. It may not happen in, in 2009. You know, it depends on negotiations. But uh, we had, we had we'll, we'll be cross that bridge. But we're, 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 so whatever equipment we do buy will be with the eye towards, uh, we need a real high production equipment if we're doing a unit lunch. It's, it's worth a few grand more if we spend, even if it doesn't happen. It'll still be a good thing. Okay, thank you. No further questions. Any other questions on the business items? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Michael, would you call the roll? Uh, Mr. Campbell? Aye. Mr. Ballou? Aye. Mr. Keppel? Aye. Ms. Lang? Aye. Mr. Romano? Aye. Ms. St. Auburn? Aye. Dr. Yaros Ramos? Aye. Ms. Ginsburg. Hi. Motion carries. Okay, we've now come to the second public comment period for comments or questions on agenda or other items. Are there comments or questions? I think Ms. Sawa had the edge and then you're next. <laughs> this is quick. Um, back when we were talking about Central School before, 
I, from my understanding, that if I um, bought it, that then we could get a 90-day eviction notice from the Robbins group because there would obviously be you know, more delay and more harm, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, but now, again, you know, we're in negotiations. So that's a little different than when, what we heard a few months ago. So did we give them a 90-day eviction notice? The, pro the process is, is all set by, by the court. So okay. we get the property, mm -hmm. then there is a 20-day waiting period to see if anybody who claims to have an interest in the property would like to dispute the taking. Okay. And so that's what happened uh, in the meeting last week, was the scheduled meeting for a judge to sit there and say, okay, come in and tell me. The urology group submitted a brief ahead of time saying we dispute it. Um, and so we set a brief in saying, you're nuts. Uh, and then we sit down with the, with, the, with the judge. And of course, like any administrative law judge, it, you know, his job is to resolve disputes. So of course he says, let me hear you on your side, let me hear your side. Okay guys, why don't you go out and try to resolve it yourselves, right? And that's where the discussion came, where we had a discussion trying to say, well, you know, we think that you know, 90 days is you know is, is more than reasonable. Uh, they're they're proposing something else, uh, and so now we're just in the final stages of meeting with the judge and saying, have we resolved it or have we not? Uh, and that's what we hope to to have. So at a certain point, um, the judge can pick you know pick a day if, if we if we don't come to a resolution. Okay. I had Wells Fargo submit. That they did for yeah, it's worth yeah, supporting our position. So we hope that will resolve soon, but these things are never as simple as you think they will be. But we do own the building. And we are working on, you know, we are uh, doing the, the most that we can. In fact, we do have another meeting next week um, just with finance facilities uh, focused just on construction projects and, uh, and primarily the central school. Uh, my name is Sarah Scalette. I have two kids in the school. Um, and I understand, um, and I was glad to hear Mr. Phillips' update. I understand the issue of diversity in our staff came up at the last meeting. So I'm glad to hear that we've done some research, even though the numbers obviously aren't what we would like to hear. And I'm glad to hear the personnel committee is going to be looking at that. I guess I have, a, I have kind of a statement and a question. Sure. Um, so my kids are both white. Um, but I think that there's really a lot more that they could be, that there's a lot of value. I don't think this is just an issue for um, parents of kids of color in this community to really have broad representation, <coughs> to see role models who don't look like them, who do look like them, different genders, different colors. I think it's a really Im important issue, and I hope we'll be looking at it you know, really, really closely, um, especially like with the principal search and the other open searches. I know that there's some um, job boards and ways that you can actively, re actively recruit um, tenants of color. I know it's hard to do. I hope that it's something that we'll really um, look at you know, look at very seriously, um, not just to fill the positions, but also to really send a message that we're trying to create a school community that's really welcoming and inclusive to people of all colors. I just share that and kind of ask what is this group would disagree with that. And did you have a, a question as well? Well, I guess the question is kind of what, what active steps you might be taking, especially as the personnel committee explores this um, with a little more detail. Like, if, if you have any active steps planned as far as actively recruiting, not just kind of waiting for candidates of color to come to us as part of the general sure. recruiting pool, but what you might be doing to actively try to, to attract them to come to leverage. Well, the personnel committee hasn't met yet on that right. topic, but, right. um, uh, and, and our, our function is not, we do not, the personnel committee does not recruit, the personnel committee does, does we are, that's not part of our function as, as board members, but maybe you could address that a little bit now, um, even prior to the personnel committee. One of the things that I did this year with uh, and Mr. Allen when I attended the Montclair State um, Job Fair, and typically we haven't been at, uh, done job fairs in quite some, quite a number of years because Glenridge seems to be a, a very attractive di district and we need plenty of uh, resumes um, of quality candidates. Um, but just trying to, again, find a, a more diverse candidate. Um, we went out to Montclair State. Uh, we'll continue to look at different job fairs uh, as a possibility. Um, it's, as I mentioned before, it's, it's a discussion that um, I'm having with other superintendents in the area. Um, or, as the numbers I read earlier are similar to us in trying to create a more diverse staff. Uh, several years ago, did you not go down also to the College of New Jersey? Uh, I've been to as a long time ago, I called New Jersey uh, Seton Hall. Um, but um, Montclair's a much more diverse population. Um, but 
but notwithstanding the population. What well, well, we said a couple of weeks ago, Betsy cited an article that she circulated to the rest of us, is this isn't a Glen Ridge problem. As you heard, it's not an Essex County or a state problem. It's a national problem that schools are grappling with. Articles are being written. Okay, great minds are getting together trying to figure out how to do this. The article that Betsy circulated seemed to suggest that, that you can, you can, if you have enough money, you can attract candidates either by um, um, paying for moving expenses and the like or just increasing salaries or financial incentives that the study shows seem to have worked. That's not a luxury that this, this district has. So like many districts, we have to get creative with it and that's what we're going to take up. And um, the, the Personnel and Policy Committee will uh, not have it on its agenda one week, but it will be an ongoing discussion that, um, though as Betsy says, the board will, doesn't do the recruiting um, and we don't manage the school districts, we, we are here to make sure they are managed. And that's an issue that I think um, we, we're hearing that that is a concern as it is a concern of all of ours and has been one of Dirk's for years and years. So it's not an issue that we're gonna look at next week and then drop. It's one that we're gonna look at on an ongoing basis and continue to be able to respond to questions. And I think to ensure that, we've been also, we're in the process of formulating board goals for the 18-19 school year, which we do every year at this time. We could consider making it a goal. And that way, it does get addressed regularly. And it's, you know, it's not that it has not been important, but it, it elevates it to a, a more uh, scrutiny. Well, it seems like you, money is salaries aside. I mean, we have, we're a well-funded, you know, great supplies. We're not teacher. well funded. Well, the, the school. I mean, we just heard all the reports from the Home and School Association. How much money the oh, town well. raises for ex extras in the classroom, and kids can the teachers can put their kids in the public in our schools. You're right about that, but you can't use donated money, which is one-time money to pay for things like salaries right. Right, but or for ongoing expenses. So in terms of funding, no, the school is not well funded. Um, we receive uh, the average amount of state aid in the state is 44% uh, of the budget. We are less than 5%. So the property taxpayer, and we have no rate, commercial rate of as we all know, the property taxpayers in Glen Ridge pay for over 95% of the education of our children. We're, we're underfunded for state aid. We are not a well-funded district, so we do not we struggle to balance our budget every year, and in fact, this year, our budget, we almost had to make cuts uh, because we got a bad health care premium quote. We were able to uh, get that number down, but no, we are not a well-funded district. We do not have uh, the money to uh, do what David referenced. The, there was an article in Education Week, the National Education Publication, about the ongoing struggle in many, many places to increase diversity uh, hiring. And the districts that seem to be the most successful nationwide offer housing allowances. And I do see you, Anthony, I'll get to <laughs> housing allowances, uh, student loan forgiveness, um, moving expenses, things like that that we can't really afford to do. Our pay scale is not the highest in Essex County, but it's not the lowest. So we're you know, somewhere in the middle. Um, we do have, you know, attractive working conditions, which is a, something happened. that we definitely have. So that's our step. We, we don't have money. We have selling points. Right. <laughs> but it is certainly, we will take it up in the personnel committee. We will um, you know, see what our minds together can come up with. Uh, we can consider making a board goal. I don't want to speak to, speak to it. Uh, before the whole board's had a chance to discuss that. But it's certainly um, not the easy <coughs> solution. Anthony, I'm sorry, I saw you, go ahead. Um, well, you started to allude to what I was, the point I was going to make, well, I'll still make it. Um, and we've talked about this a few times, there's, you know, the, the fiscal situation is what it is here. So we can't change that. Um, but my thought is that what we do have is a unique environment. And so that might be what should be focused on because that is our selling point. It doesn't cost us more money to promote it and we're not promoting something we don't have. We 
should talk about what we have sure. and, and talk about it in a way that, that is attractive. And, and maybe that is the main selling point because the salary is, you know, is, is reasonable. It's competitive. It's competitive. It's competitive. Yeah. So that, that was my point. That was, you know, just to look at it possibly in a different way than, you know, the larger towns, the more well-funded districts tend to look at it. Okay, thank so. you. Okay, I, I think Lady Beck's next. We'll get to everybody. Sure. Hi, I'm Tiffany Pratt. So I just want to follow up. I, I, um, I don't think it's a, a, a money issue at all, quite honestly. And I actually just came to listen um, tonight because, Sarah, you bring up a great point that's been a challenge and a concern of mine for many, many years, right? And we talked about it. Um, as a board, and while you were encouraged by Mr. Phillips' comments, I was actually discouraged. I was actually quite disappointed because the measure of what other schools are doing and how underrepresented they are um, it didn't feel like a strategy. You know, it didn't feel like a specific approach in terms of what we're going to do in this district if it's a priority. And you mentioned this district, it has to be a priority, and I've said it in many meetings before. You don't prioritize it and or incentivize it and or track it. You know, track it. It's not going to happen. So unfortunately, just looking at other schools of similar size and say, oh, they have 4%, they have 2%, they have 3% is not encouraging because that doesn't change our numbers. Sure. What's encouraging is a strategy and or, as what you were sharing, is action. Um, I will also say that um, I think that a district that is attractive, if you said it's a very attractive district, and I think the challenge of attractive, particularly in families, the first thing you do is move to this district. Right, and so as, as families go on tours and they don't see teachers that reflect the community and or they don't see other students that reflect the community, they make a different choice, right? And I've had this conversation with many of my peers in many different towns, right? So you go on that school tour and you're looking around, I mean, reverse situation, you go on a tour and all you see are black folks in the school, that's not where you're gonna put your child. I mean, think about it, making it really personal, right? You go into a school district, beautiful town, amazing homes, close to New York City, but you look around and no one looks like you. None of the teachers reflect the community. We have something amazing, we have New York City. So I, I don't believe that it's a matter of money and or salary, I think it's a matter of intention and being intentional about wanting this to be a diverse community that is important for our children to be able to interact with people of all different you know, ethnicities and all different religions, that's important for our community, for our children of all, you know, you're gonna have to work in a world that looks very different and what this community looks like. And we have New York City, right? So it's the most diverse, one of the most diverse towns ever. And one of the things that's discouraging us, I did offer a solution, right? I offered a solution, a very simple, easy, low risk solution, you know, that I offered, you know, and you asked me to work with Mr. Donovan. I thought it should have been a more senior level. And um, it was uh, the National um, Minority Network of educa Educators and Trainers. It's called NIMNET. We, we passed some emails back and forth. I followed up, you know, this has been going over a year and a half. And at the end of the day, Mr. Donovan told me it was too expensive. That was a slap in the face. I mean, it's just not a priority. It's $1,000. And all we had to do was put open positions on a job board that says, I'm looking for folks of color and or teachers of color, or whatever, right? So the resume match, here's the open positions. There's, there's schools all over the country, right? So I put them in touch with the CEO of that organization and said, hey, I was really encouraged, right? You're gonna follow up. And when I saw him in the hallway, he said, oh, it's too expensive. So I was really disappointing, right? Over $1,000. So all I'm saying is that I just came to listen. I was hoping there was gonna be a strategy that really in place, but at this point, I have to do what's right for my family. So we chose to take our children out of the district and we have to vote with our feet and our dollars because it's the only thing that we can do when we see that over years and years, there's no change. And at this meeting, now we're saying we're gonna have a personnel committee. So it's unfortunate, it's disappointing, you know, um, greatly, but you know, at the end of the day, we have to do what's right for our family. And if we were in the Midwest, it would be acceptable and not in the Northeast when there's so much diversity in this part of the community. So those are my parting words, and I, for the greater community, I hope that the personnel community will do a better job and make this a priority. Thank you. And then we Well, um, when we contacted them, just so we're clear what the information they give is, thousand dollars to advertise, mm -hmm. but if we're hiring someone through their advertisement, we have to pay a 15% fee on their salary. Sure. So it, it, it's, 
I don't want it to sound like it's we passed up a thousand dollar fee. It was fifteen percent, looking close to ten thousand dollars. Forty. Forty five. Let's make sure we've gotten to all the first questions and then we've got to the second questions. Yes. I look, I just want to say that I, I truly want to echo the sentiments of the other people who have spoken tonight. I think it's important that we all speak to this issue as a community, so I think it helps you as a board to hear from all of us as a community, especially, Betsy, as you say, going into uh, this time of year when you are setting your board goals. Um, and I understand that you can't unilaterally do that, so that's why I want to echo the sentiments and, and encourage the board to really, you know, to echo Tiffany's statements, that intentionality really goes a long way when it comes to this. And I, you know, not understanding some of the economics behind some of the boards, after the last meeting, I looked for our positions on some diversity and education boards. One in particular that said that it was only a $175 uh, $175 listing fee. And I saw listings from other districts in New Jersey, it was a national board, and I didn't see our position. So I, I understand that we have fiscal impediments in particular with using recruiting and search firms where there are those high fees. But I would definitely encourage the board to look for those lower bar solutions uh, that fit our budget and bring real intentionality to this issue for our, for all of our needs. Thank you. Absolutely. We will remember those words and the intentionality. Thank you. Okay. This is Sala. Yeah. Um, I'm disappointed in everything that's been said. I just want to mention, though, that this topic has come up repeatedly in the last two and a half years that I've been attended. It's not some new concern of the community. And each time, we've been advised that you know, people would look into it. Yet, we have openings, not a ton, but we have openings at all levels, from what I read at this, and here we all speak. Every year, I keep hoping it's gonna change and it hasn't. Um, I was struck by Mr. Phillips' comment that, um, you know, you get tons of good resumes, you haven't had to recruit. Well, that means there's something very attractive about this district. And I will second what somebody said, because I am in the New York School District so much, that there are some wonderful teachers of color and also not of color there. And, you know, the, the difference, the struggle they have there is with facilities and also, frankly, you know, the deportment of the students. It's much more challenging. So it, it might only take a few people to, to sort of get the ball rolling so that it attracts a greater diversity. The other thing that seemed contradictory to me was last meeting you all mentioned that you went to the Montclair State um, job fair and that there was no diversity there. It was uh, a futile thing. And that's when I said, well, we need to be doing things different. Now I'm here you went to the Montclair job fair, but we, we, I believe you still don't have any. So is going to the Montclair State job fair a good or bad? Last week it was presented as a futile effort. What I was explaining is that we were making an effort to, to go out and look for a more diverse population than the job searches that we've done in the past. So we need to try other things. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Just, um, sorry. I was going to say, and what, why did you go to Montclair State? I'm just I'm curious about all Montclair State has, has a, a very diverse population. population. In, in their education program, right. right. Yeah. But, but last week you all said there was a diverse. No, we didn't. I don't believe that's what we said. I believe that what we, what Dirk said last week is that um, one of his efforts to meet more diverse candidates was to go to the Montclair Job Fair. I don't know if that resulted in applications for our jobs or not. Um, uh, I will tell you, I reached out to several people um, that, that I did a brief interview with. Two of them, um, and then I contacted the, the one individual. She had already accepted the job. Uh, I passed a few resumes on to Mr. Donovan. I'm not sure he uh, if he reached out to him. Okay. And, 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 and this is just overall, not uh, all the students we spoke to that day. Okay. The 
Question. In addition to Montclair State, are there other universities on your roster that you're reaching out to um, for recruiting purposes? Um, there's, we didn't attend any other job fairs. I know there's a couple, um, again, in our time. Uh, typically, I'll give you an example of Montclair State. I might have saw two other superintendents there that I'm aware of. Most, most of the other school districts will have a human resource department that they're sending out these individuals to job fairs. We're sending out loading and building administrative superintendent. So we try to limit um, our, our days out of the district. Got it. So for this the personnel committee, that would probably be something you want to do, just expand outside of Montclair State. Well, um, this is a person. point that I think I was talking with Anthony last week after or, or after last board meeting, was that um, we are somewhat hampered by because we don't have an HR department. We don't have an HR person. And so to our, our administrative staff is spread thin, so the intentionality that you discuss, um, we will certainly include that in our deliberations, um, but we have very few administrators trying to do very, very many jobs. It's not to say that diversity hiring is not extremely important. It is to every member of this board. So is school construction, so is investigation of kids, so is making budget every year, so is um, all the testing that we are forced to do by our friends at the state level. So it is also a question of um, not just our financial resources and the fact that we are totally underfunded, but the fact that um, our personnel resources are, are not there. And the reason for that is not that we don't want a human resource person. The reason is that we operate under certain caps, including a 2% um, tax levy cap and an administrative cost cap. And if we made the decision to hire a human resource, a dedicated human resource person, that position would have to fit in under that cap as well. And the cap is sort of based on what you already have, which is a lean operation, so you can't increase it by very much. So we are somewhat hampered by that. That is not to say there is always a way. There is always a way. But we do operate under certain constraints that we have to other questions? Yes. I was just going to say that that's 
that's um, that's understandable. I think that um, you just work smarter, not harder. At a minimum, just put the jobs on the job boards where people are going to go look, and that takes no HR, no effort, very little effort, just to be visible when folks are looking for opportunities. So that's the last. And also, um, one thing that Anthony and I also talked about. It sounds like we had a long, long conversation. <laughs> it was cold in the parking lot, but um, uh, on this sub, we did talk about the sub because it's word of mouth. Everybody can help us by spreading the word. Yeah, but when you come, it has to look welcome. It has to look like there's more than well, you know, a unanimous, homogenous town, right? Or you don't want to be in that community or in that school. So, I mean, I think to Greta's point, if you get one, you get two, right? Just so that it doesn't look so homogenous when you visit. Otherwise, it's not attractive for, for families and, and students when they take the tour. So, I'd I, I say more. Yeah, that, that's, I mean, that's, a, that's a different issue than the. Right. Sure. Uh, you know, that's certainly something that uh, the, the, the national goal of integration, which we said you know, a few years ago, has been largely abandoned and there's been sort of the de facto segregation that's happened yeah. in the country and in New Jersey. And it's something that, that, um, that is a shame because integration helps everybody. It helps you not just uh, not just minorities, it helps white you know, people, it helps everybody. It's, a, it's just been shown in study after empirical study. So that that is very important to us. It's just that we, we don't have uh, we don't have any kind of magic uh, you know bullet to deal with that you know, fundamental issue of integration. But we would love to do whatever we can, including you know, increasing our uh, kind of representation with our staff and staff teachers. Okay, other questions and comments? Yes, Mr.